in a county as politically active and heavily democratic as Montgomery County, to have Montgomery County activists, you know, write an op-ed in the Washington Post, you know, criticizing the current uh, county executive as not being progressive enough and needs to be replaced. Well, I mean, that was shocking to say the least and interesting. And for political junkies, we want to, we want more. So what do you make of this phenomenon, Mark? Well, I, I think it's, it's instructive that the piece spent about half of, of its text uh, criticizing him on uh, his uh, his criticism of the Thrive uh, Montgomery 2050 initiative, and uh, that was really the difference uh, that made made a big difference. And and I uh, candidly, I you know, on that issue, I I have great sympathy with Mark Elridge. And maybe there's a a, a circular phenomenon there, but uh, it is clearly interesting for those who are not part of the Democratic primary, myself. Uh, to see that there is that uh, divide that Mark Elridge is having to take ha, ha, take on. Well, what I found what I found interesting about the article was was the criticism, and this deals with the Thrive Fifty Montgomery, but was about the number of housing units that that have not been built, and you know because allegedly because they're not directed to affordable housing. When we have a desperate need for housing units, some I think we're 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 actually producing somewhere near uh, about twenty percent of what we actually need uh, for the demands of the county. Nancy, uh, you can have the final word on on this topic. Well, I would take exception to your view that uh, the writers of that piece uh, were criticizing Mark for not being progressive enough. Uh, because that means to most people, very, very, especially liberal, extra liberal. And I don't think that's the case at all. Uh, I know at least one of the writers uh, pretty well. Uh, and I think uh, what they're saying there is that we need to think bigger and we need to deliver. And that has not happened under this administration uh, in a variety of ways. The Thrive uh, plan is just a plan. It's just a document that recommends some additional additional density and urban areas. It's not a big change in the community ideals. And in any event, it doesn't actually require it. It just says we should think about this there. Uh, so I don't I don't think that's a, I, a showstopper right there. But they do criticize Mark as well for his stance on housing. And Mark is not a fan of it. He doesn't support it. And he's historically stood in the way of many projects. So that's Mark. Uh, I don't know if you saw the story that uh, in the budget, uh, he just uh, uh, got in the way of a dog park in Chevy Chase. And that's classic Mark. Uh, you know, I'm not for things. And uh, people love that. It's done more for, well for him so far. So I don't think this uh, opinion piece is going to make a break, Mark. Well, I understand that, that Mark is still uh, leading in uh, fundraising in the county. Um, at least that's what I heard the other day. And that he's still, you know, still seems to be uh, quite popular. Now, you raised your eyebrows, Nancy, when I said that. So um, have you heard something different? Well, I ha I'll just say I haven't checked the state records. So I don't know what the reporting has been on that. Uh, but historically, Mark has, has not raised much money, hasn't really impeded his success. Yeah, I, I don't think there has been a report out since January. So I think it's it's more um, a sort of a whisper campaign talking about that. Uh, and clearly, he is he the county executive is up against a, a candidate who can self fund. Uh, so at, it, it's hard to see where uh, it's hard to do an analysis based on that. We've got the primary yeah. coming up, presumably in July. Well, uh, so, so since you brought up David Blair, Mark, I mean, sure. what's he, you know, what has he actively been doing? I mean, you know, it's it's been a very quiet campaign, at least what I've seen. Uh, it, it has. And, and it, it, it presents, obviously, a challenge for him in that if if there is such a thing as a anti Mark Elrich vote, uh, it is now split uh, among a number of candidates, which gives uh, the incumbent the 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 advantage of a kind of base vote that uh, he can draw on. Well, you're going to have the last word there, Mark. 